<laughs> Gee whiz, did you paint anything but self-portraits? I stand corrected. Hey, Tim and Moby. Could you tell me about pop art and who started the whole idea? From Lily. We'd be happy to answer your question, especially since Moby here has become our area's number one pop artist. Not that he had a lot of competition. In a nutshell, Lily, pop art is an artistic movement that flourished during the 1960s. It treats ordinary items, stuff you'd find in everyday life, as art. At first glance, it doesn't seem to make a lot of sense. Like, who would make a painting of a soup can, and how could they sell it for thousands of dollars? Or why would anyone paint a panel from a comic book? <laughs> As a pop artist, you should know these things. Anyway, pop art was a reaction against traditional views of art and culture. See, art was generally thought of as high culture. It was supposed to express big, important ideas, powerful emotional experiences, and stuff like that. On the other hand, elements of low culture, like comic books, popular magazines, and consumer products were viewed as brainless, cheap, and disposable. By treating low culture as high art, pop artists did two things. First, they celebrated the vibrancy and fun of American popular culture. Second, they challenged the public's idea of what art was supposed to be and did so in a humorous, clever way. For example, art was supposed to be unique and irreplaceable. But pop artists often used mass production techniques, allowing them to copy their artwork over and over. They also challenged the way that art was supposed to be appreciated. Traditionally, high art was exhibited in galleries and museums, but pop artists often played with these spaces by, say, arranging the gallery to look like a store or supermarket. Right, they were mocking the art world right to its face. In particular, they were reacting to an art movement called Abstract Expressionism, which was adored by critics in the 1950s. This art was supposed to convey intense personal emotions through bold shapes, colors, and patterns. Pop art was the opposite. Instead of abstract swirls of paint, it depicted people and objects realistically. And the images weren't supposed to be deeply personal or rooted in emotion. Funny you should ask. Even though pop art celebrated America, the movement began in Britain. During the 1950s, English artists like Richard Hamilton and Eduardo Paolazzi began assembling collages that spoofed American culture. Take a look at this one. It crams several slices of American pop culture into one image. Meanwhile, in America, a few artists began using everyday objects in their work. Jasper Johns painted images of flags, maps, and targets, and Robert Rauschenberg made collages from photographs and other materials. But true pop art really started in the 1960s. It was then that Roy Lichtenstein began producing paintings inspired by comic book panels. And Klaus Oldenburg turned ordinary objects like food into sculpture. Meanwhile, some artists like Pauline Boti made political pieces in the pop style. And others, like Idel Weber, focused on scenes from everyday life. But in a crowded field, no one defined pop art like Andy Warhol. Right, the soup can guy, who you happen to be dressed as right now. Before becoming a fine artist, he was a commercial illustrator, designing things like magazine ads and greeting cards. So it's no surprise that many of his paintings focused on consumer products and celebrity photographs from magazines. Warhol really embraced the whole mass production idea. Most of his paintings were silkscreened, and he called his studio the factory. He became a major celebrity and dabbled in filmmaking, publishing, music, and lots of other stuff. Well, like any artistic trend, pop art faded in popularity over the years, but it never really went away. Some of the original 1960s pop artists are still producing artwork, and their ideas influenced a new generation of artists like Jeff Koons and Takashi Murakami. <laughs>